Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I am sharing with you the September version of Pick a Stick Challenge. And this is the 10 step challenge that's randomly picked by sticks. Uh, this month in the group we had a guest artist, Hanny Tromp, and she's the one who picked out the sticks. So these are her challenge prompts. Step one was to add black marker or pen and since that was starting at the beginning instead of at the end I thought that it would be a good opportunity to make some type of a quick illustration and I was uh, looking through the steps and the third step was to add wings and so I decided to make a little desert fairy because fairies have wings and apparently boots according to Ozzy Osbourne but anyway we'll we won't go off track this time, right? <laughs> Fairies wear boots and you gotta believe me. Never mind. Okay, so I've got my soft graphite drafting pencil and I'm doing a quick illustration of a very whimsical girl with a, you know, a look about her that's definitely not realistic. Um, I did tape off my page and gesso it before I started. I didn't even think you needed to see that at the beginning, but I forgot how annoying it is to try and erase pencil off of gesso. <sighs> does not work at all. It's terrible. But anyway, then I go and get my illustration pins. Uh, these are the pet pins that have India ink in them. And <clears throat> I use the brush pen to go around the Saguaro cactuses and then the medium bullet tip to go around my girl and once that's all done I try to erase it again it it smushes a little bit more and I move on step two was to add to use pastel chalk in some way so I decided to use my pan pastels these are really great and I never get them out I don't know why so the first thing I did was to get out a new 12 by 12 stencil that I got from Tuesday morning. The other day I got a whole stack of new stencils. That's always fun. <laughs> they have good prices there, but they're usually ones that are uh, going to be discontinued or are discontinued. But, you know, it doesn't matter to me. So um, using different turquoises and blues and purples and lavenders, but the first thing that I did was to use my Versamark um, sticky embossing pad and go through the stencil. And everywhere that the stencil has um, left that sticky mark, the, the chalk or pastel or whatever you want to call it, attaches itself to that area as you go over it. I am using the soft tools, the like kind of weird um, dense sponges that go with the pastels as well. And I, I go back over and add a little bit more ink with a cosmetic sponge every once in a while in places that I thought didn't get enough until I get that dark and light pattern in my background. Then I'm using some of the soft tool wands, just one wand I guess, um, the one with the round tip, to also color in or paint in my uh, cactuses starting with the real limey green and then moving on to some darker colors to add some shading of course these cactuses they are at their their you know when there's well before they even start getting arms they're already a hundred years old so you know they're they're a long living species although they are protected um, because they could go extinct so they you can't cut down or chop down or pull down a saguaro cactus without getting in trouble. Um, but they have ridges along them so I need to put in the shadows of the ridges and then also I added a little bit of sun light looking type color with the yellow at the tips where the sun might be shining down on them. And once I'm happy with that I'm going to set it with my spe Spectrafix but the nozzle is completely clogged. I mess with it for a while. Um, I soak it. I do all kinds of stuff and I can't get it to work. So I decide um, 
instead to use that same old cosmetic sponge and some fluid matte medium and just lightly sponge over the whole page sealing in that pastel because I wanted the intensity of it to stay I didn't want it to get rubbed off and since this paper is just a watercolor paper and doesn't have much tooth it's going to rub off so that's why I sealed everything in with matte medium the next step was to add wings and I have this little die of some interesting wings and so I use some copper paper uh, it has copper on one side and white on the other and I wanted I wanted the wings to I wanted a double set of wings like a fairy would have um, or a dragonfly or something like that so I needed two sets but I needed them to be facing in opposite directions <clears throat> so I flipped over the uh, die and cut it from the back once and cut it from the top once and then in that way my wings worked out and then for the bottom set I left them uh, solid and for the top set I punched out all the little detail on the wings which has little spirals and cuts out stuff it's it's cute little uh, die that I got from Tuesday morning I may imagine that <clears throat> next step was to use a straight edge and I just I didn't want to get into that that much I just um, drew a black line around the edge of my page a border uh, with a straight edge and called it good and I still haven't actually glued my wings on I wanted to do a little bit of filling in of the color of the girl before I put the wings on so I kind of got distracted by the whole straight edge thing and then I came back to it <laughs> to putting the wings on so I'm using portrait pink and buff titanium mixed together to just put an acrylic base coat of skin tone on her skin and then I'm using uh, burnt sienna gold shimmer like an iridescent gold and iridescent copper to uh, fill in her hair this whole piece has a very southwestern palette with the kind of turquoise turquoisey blue the copper the uh, olive green type colors <laughs> kind of obsessed with it um, you know because yeah it's what I see every day so I like it and I enjoy it and that's just what I was feeling on this day when I did this challenge and who says there isn't desert fairies there could be they might be out there right now in the wash and we just don't see them of course they would be much smaller because like I said before the saguaro cactuses are sometimes eight or ten feet tall <laughs> So she would be a very tall fairy if she was standing up that high, taller than me. But anyway, we're not going for realism here. We're going whimsical. So, yeah. The next step, uh, step five of ten, was to use book paper. And I hadn't decided what color I wanted to make her little outfit yet. So I just decided to use a very old, aged dictionary page, which I thought, looked kind of like something a fairy would you know the color not the words but the color would be something a fairy would wear kind of a um, very neutral color so I used my deli paper to make a pattern and then I flipped over the deli paper glued it onto the back of the page and then used that to cut out um, my shape the reason I did that is because deli paper is translucent so I can draw the shape very easily trace not really just draw but trace the shape very easily and use it as a pattern next step was to add chipboard or cardboard piece these are some uh, chipboard thing punch out things that I have I don't even know what they are I think they might be tabs for folders or something I don't know anyway I painted them copper and also added in some of those scraps of the book page that will kind of uh, make give them like maybe a little bit more of a grungy appearance and for my tip the way that I trimmed off the excess book paper is to just use a uh, sanding block that works great for chipboard you can really make a very even edge by you know if you've glued something to the top of it and you want to you want to 
trim off the edges rather than using scissors and trying to go around it. You can just use a sanding block. Step seven, add pearls. Didn't have any stick on pearls that I could find, so I decided to use this pearl drops type thing from uh, Faber Castell. It's just um, a shimmery pearl white color in a fluid and you just dot it on and then once it's dry it looks like little pearls. So I just dotted it around here and there, um, added some detail to her dress, added it to the wings, and then I went away for an hour and let it dry and then came back. So that's why the light's a little bit different. Now it's uh, later in the evening, so it's not quite as bright. The next step, um, write random words in at least three places. I just decided to use my white Posca pen and write some words about the desert um, on around the edges of my sorrel cactuses. Then add something another artist gave you. This piece of uh, tissue or deli paper is from um, the woman that calls herself M-R-A-Z. Uh, I think her name's Merzinski or something like that. Anyway, her first name is Arlene. And she sent me some happy mail a while back that has all these very pretty papers in it. And this is one of them. And I was hoping that it would stay whiter, lighter on there, on the background. When I put it on there, it kind of blended into the background. But it has some copper glitter swirls on it. So I just cut it in a swirly shape. Um, Swirls are just something that are close to my heart, and I think they go with the desert pretty well. They're a common theme in petroglyphs around here. Um, just, I think, symbolizing kind of the same idea of infinity, of something, of life going in a, in a circle, and in a, you know, that type of thing. We won't go into it, but yeah. <laughs> so I glued those on with glossy um, collage page stuff because I wanted, I didn't want to dull it out with some matte medium. The last step was to add an image with a homemade stamp and I had made these little cactus, uh, build a cactus <laughs> stamps the other day when I was messing around with stamp carving so I decided to use them since they were very appropriate to the page. I'm using some, I believe I end up using the fern color of archival ink and just building my little uh, uh, baby saguaros and prickly pears and barrel cactuses around the bottom edge. Um, I end up, you know, detailing them more because they're a little bit hard to see, but I did stamp them all on there using my little pieces that I carved the other day. So all my steps are done and it's just now down to detailing. Um, I used my black fine Posca pen to go back over some of the lines that had been obscured by the paint um, and the pastel as I was working. And then I'm going to use my pit brush artist pens. Um, these are India ink pens that since all this page is very sealed between the gloss medium and the matte medium and all the stuff that I put on there, I have a little bit of uh, open time with these India ink pens where I can uh, blend with my finger. So I decided to try to bring out those swirls a little bit with a turquoise tealish colored one. Um, oh yeah, then I get distracted and I go detail <laughs> the cactus. <laughs> this is again my fine tip black Posca pen. Um, you might wonder, why do I use the illustration pins at the beginning and then go back over it with the Posca pins. The illustration pins dry permanent. They don't smear at all. But once everything is sealed and non-porous, they don't dry as quickly. But the Posca pins being a kind of an acrylic product, they dry very quickly over the top of acrylic and they will also draw over a top acrylic with a 100% opaque look to them. So I like to use them for the detailing because I can draw over everything and not worry about 
getting putting my arm in it and smearing it because like I said these these uh, indie ink brush pins I do have open time where I can blend them and smear them with my fingers so that's the reason that I have multiple pin types so I'm just continuing with the pit artist brush pins to do uh, shading um, on the girl on the dress you know that type of stuff and I do that for a while I fuss with it for a while you know because I'm trying to get the very tiny details the way I want them <laughs> I have a few different skin tones a darker one a lighter one I'm using the lighter one to blend the edges of the darker one a little bit um, helps it blend in a little bit it's very similar to the color of acrylic that I painted on there which is a blend of buff titanium and uh, portrait pink I think portrait pink is too pink um, a lot of people use that as a skin tone for Caucasian skin and it's probably pretty close to what my skin is because I have very pinky skin but for me I just like to tone it down a little bit with buff titanium which is a off-white color so I'm also using my white Posca pen to do a little bit of highlighting as well and blending that with my finger by just tapping it and letting it blend out so that it doesn't have such hard edges I'm using a couple different pinks for the cheek and the um, lips. At some point I get too much black on there and I rub some of it off because this is all sealed. I can use a wet baby wipe to to get some of that black off. It doesn't completely come off but enough so that it's not so intensely black. Oh, there's where I'm doing it. Decide there's too much black in such a small space. She has too big of eyebrows or something. I don't know. He <laughs> was bothering me. <laughs> so fussing and fussing until I'm happy with it. Um, remember that you can always come over and ask to join the Pick a Stick Challenge group on Facebook. I will put the link to the group below. This is uh, this has been going on almost two years now, and we have a monthly challenge of an art journal page with 10 prompts and a monthly challenge of an ATC with three prompts there's prizes at the end of the month if you do all of them and put them in the right places and all that stuff so I will put links in the description box below so that you can come and join that if you want to um, the last thing that I did was to add a rub on word because that little area up the upper left corner was empty to me so I just found a word that said imagine and put that on. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you haven't already, share if you want to. And also in this description box below are some links to other videos of the same challenge. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.